Ironically, however, the very innovations that are making possible dramatic improvements in human well-being are also creating new problems which raise the specter of an alarming and possibly catastrophic disaster to the biosphere we live in. And herein lies the dilemma that we all face. Let me illustrate. Improved public health has caused the world's infant mortality rate to decline by 60% over the last 40 years. In the same period, the world's average life expectancy has increased from 46 years in 1950s to 63 years today. This is a development which, as individuals, we can only applaud. However, the result of these positive measures is a world population that has risen during the same short period of time geometrically to almost six billion people and could easily exceed six billion, eight billion by the year 2020. The negative impact of population growth on all of our planetary ecosystems is becoming appallingly evident. The rapid growing exploitation of the world's supply of energy and water is a matter of deep concern. And the toxic byproducts of widespread industrialization have increased us atmospheric pollution to dangerous levels. Unless nations will agree to work together to tackle these cross-border challenges posed by population growth, overconsumption of resources, and environmental degradation, the prospects for a decent life on our planet will be threatened. The recent UN meeting in Cairo is appropriately focused on one of these key issues, population growth. But the controversies which have erupted at the conference illustrate the problem of coming to grips with issues that are deeply divisive and which have a profound moral dimension. The United Nations can and should play an essential role in helping the world find a satisfactory way of stabilizing world population and stimulating economic development in a manner that is sensitive to religious and moral considerations. Economic growth is, of course, an in inevitable corollary of a growing population and is essential to improve standards of living. But without careful coordination, unrestrained economic growth poses further threats to our environment. This was a major subject of discussion at the conference in Rio de Janeiro on the environment two years ago. The focus then was on sustainable growth and global development. It was pointed out at the conference that growth is most efficiently managed by the private sector. But regulation of the process by national governments and international bodies is also needed. And once again, the United Nations should certainly be among the catalysts and coordinators of this process.